Now we're going to talk more about gravity. So up till now, we said gravity is just a constant acceleration down. It's a force proportional to mass near the surface of the Earth, always points down. Everything accelerates the same due to gravity. That's all we talked about. But of course, gravity is more, more than that. Right? It's, uh, if you look at what we usually a book will call universal gravitation, meaning not just the sur surface of the Earth, but any two objects um, in the universe and what gravity does. And the good part is I like to say we are all attractive. This makes us happy, although some people don't want to be attractive. But that's the basic idea. Every two objects in the universe attract each other uh, by a formula that looks like this. Fg equals g, a new constant, times the mass of one times the mass of the other over their separation. Okay, so if we want to think about it, the graph, here's mass one, here's mass two, here's an axis between them. So the gravitational force between two masses always acts along the axis that connects them. If you're doing multiple masses and adding up all the forces, then you treat them as vectors, you vector sum them. But the individual gravitational force between two, you can always get the direction just by drawing a line between them. You can always draw a line. Right? So it's always attractive, so this one feels the gravitational force that way, and this one feels the gravitational force that way. And it's both, they both feel it by this formula. And you can see they make an action-reaction pair because they feel the same force. The force of this one, g m1 m2 over r squared, where r is the separation. The force on this one, g m1 m2 over r squared. They both depend on m1 m m2, so they both get the same magnitude. So let's look at a few of these, make sure we know what everything is. g is the gravitational constant, which I can never remember the, val the value for some reason. I don't know why, I always have to look it up. It's uh, 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11. And you can tell what the unit must be from this formula. It must be Newton's uh, meter squared per kilogram squared. Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. But of course, you're going to double check. Yeah. So that's G in that formula. M1 and M2 are the masses in kilograms, of course, if you're working in MKS units. And R, to be specific, R is the separation of their center of mass. It's not from the edge to the edge. It's from, for uniform spheres, it's from the center to the center. Now I've drawn it as a, as a, a vector here, so let's think about the direction of the vector, the direction of each force, and I'll just put attractive. Okay, so for this one it's that way, and for this one it's that way. It's toward the other uh, mass. And for the magnitude, I'll remind you that it's equal. Each one feels the same magnitude. That's why it makes an action-reaction pair. And that's why if two things just start moving uh, toward each other gravitationally, it doesn't break momentum conservation. This one builds up momentum this way. This one builds up momentum this way. Momentum is a vector sum, so the momentum would remain zero. They look like they're building up energy. You're gaining kinetic energy, but they have potential energy. You're losing potential energy. So energy is also conserved. Now, if you're doing problems where you really need a more formal vector statement than that, let me show you how we do this with vectors. Um, in this case, we would say mass one, mass two. So I'll say here's your vector notation. You would say the force one dash two. Right, so that means the force that one causes two to feel. So F12 is a force on mass two due to mass one. It has a negative sign. You'll see why in a minute. Big G, mass one, mass two, R12. Writing it this way, that's just the distance between one and two. It's always positive. It's really the magnitude of the vector from one to two. But I'm going to write it in a way that that's just a positive number. It's a magnitude. Squared, of course. I did squared over here, yes, squared. And uh, now we need the unit vector, one, two. That gets you the direction, right? So what this means is the force on two due to one, the vector r, one, two goes from one to two. 
the unit vector r12 is 1 in that direction from 1 to 2 with a magnitude of 1. All right, so here I could draw it here. There is the unit vector 1, 2. So since it points in the direction 1 to 2, and since the gravitational force is attractive, the force will be the opposite direction. That's why there's a negative sign there. Okay? So this is the vector way to write it. And now let's imagine we switched 1 and 2. What if it was F2, 1? The force that 2 causes 1 to feel. Okay? F2, 1 would be minus g m1 m2 over r21 squared. That's all the same. But it'll be the unit vector r21. Unit vector r21. Well, the vector r2 to 1 is this way. Therefore, the unit vector is also that way, r hat 2, 1. So that expression would be this way, except it has the negative sign on it. So there you go. OK, so the unit vector points the wrong way for an attractive force. This is what makes it an attractive force.